We have an emergency stock market meeting in today's video, and what gets very interesting, when it gets rough in the market, when everything's going down overall, it gets interesting in the penny stock market. People still want to make money in this market. People short the market, but a lot of people move into the penny stock and small cap market, which is why in this video, I have a huge opportunity for you guys, multiple opportunities, but one huge opportunity. This company has an acquisition in the works. They have a dividend coming up. This could have a good run up very soon, but this all, everything in this video, is just my opinion. These are stock ideas. You should not buy, hold, or sell anything I talk about in this video. Just keep that in mind. Everything is not financial advice. Everywhere you look right now in general stock market news, you're hearing constant doom and gloom. Everybody is saying this is the next 2008. The stock market's going to crash. The entire world economy is going to crash. Everything's over. That's what you're hearing in the news right now. Yes, we do have a horrible situation on our hands. SVB Financial Group Bank collapsed in the largest bank failure since 2008. I want to give the latest updates on the situation, and I have a few penny stocks that can still, in my opinion, run significantly during this crisis. If you thought the collapse of Silvergate Bank, that little, little bank ticker SI, if you thought that was scary, Think again, SI only has 11 billion assets under management, which is a lot. But if you compare that to how large of a bank failure SVB is, Silicon Valley has 209 billion assets under management, which is the second lar largest bank failure in history. Washington Mutual was the largest bank failure in history, which happened in 2008. Obviously, that was a huge market crash and years after that as well. But Washington Mutual had 307 billion assets under management. And here are all these little circles. Here are all the other banks that collapsed in the past. And you can see how big of a collapse Silicon Valley Bank is. SVB was on Forbes America's best banks for five years in a row. This was a highly trustworthy bank. If you saw this, oh, it's been on there for five years. Uh, my money's safe in here. Well, it wasn't. That's why it's very, very scary when something this trustworthy goes down. It gets very scary because a lot of people don't trust their bank now. A lot of people don't know what to do with their money. They don't know where to keep their money. Bitcoin might be an option. I don't know. But what I'm saying is it completely makes everybody go crazy and just take all their cash, take all their money out of the banks. And it, just, it can cause a domino effect, cause other banks to crash, and cause everybody to get scared out of their mind, and that can cause a crisis in the U.S. Now, let's continue to talk about it. The biggest worry is having a domino effect just like in 2008, where after a large bank failed, the biggest bank to fail in history, Washington Mutual, lots of smaller banks followed along and failed shortly after. After, watch after Washington Mutual failed in 2008, you can see how many banks followed and collapsed right behind it. 2009, 2009, 2008, 2009. These are, this is a list of you know some of the biggest banks that have collapsed, and you can see how many were right after Washington Mutual. So it's scary. There's this scare right now that a bunch of other banks could collapse, and it's very possible that this could happen. I think there will be you know, at least a few more banks to collapse. I don't know how bad it's going to get. Nobody knows how bad it's going to get, but that's why we're talking about the information here. This is the first bank failure since 2020. Another big fear of this SVB collapse is it can cause major trouble for other large companies that have held cash at SVB, specifically tech startups, because a lot of these tech startups were getting money from SVB. They were a top lender for tech companies, and the FDIC only covers $250,000, meaning they're only going to be able to recover $250K out of all the cash that these companies held at that bank, unless they're bailed out or unless a company buys them out. Unless something happens, which is possible. It's possible. It's looking more likely by the minute. We're getting these updates coming every moment. But Roku had $487 million of its $1.9 billion cash held at SVB. That's 26% of their cash. And they said in a filing, it's largely uninsured, which means they could never get that cash back, which is a huge 26% of their cash that completely fundamentally changes the company and it changes their plan going forward. It could have a drastic impact on the company. Maybe look at this one for a potential short position. That's very, very risky because because SVB could get bailed out, boom, and then Roku flies because they realize, oh, our $487 million is good. So it could be a long or a short to very risky. Just keep an eye on a company like this. Roblox has about 5% of its $3 billion cash in Silicon Valley Bank. 
These are just a few companies that we know have money in the bank, but I suspect soon we'll hear more large companies that have cash in this bank. We just need them to post a filing about it. We've been getting these filings, you know, we have that, that from these companies, these large companies saying, oh, we have all this cash in SVB. It's, we might not get this money back. We haven't got all of the filings yet. So there's probably a lot more companies, tech startups specifically, that have a bunch of cash in this comment down below to take a guess of what company you believe could have cash in this 89 percent of the banks 175 billion deposits were uninsured at the end of 2022 and their fate remains to be determined there are steps being taken right now to make sure svb depositors don't lose their funds there's an auction underway to find a buyer for silicon valley bank and if they cannot find a buyer, U.S. officials are seriously considering safeguarding all uninsured deposits at Silicon Valley Bank to prevent a panic in the U.S. financial system. By the time you're watching this video, you may be able to see if there's bidders for the bank. Type in SVB bidders on Google. You might be able to find out if there's any bidders because the bids are due Sunday afternoon, which is today. Another scare coming from this is Circle that has 3.3 billion in SVB. Circle manages stablecoin USD and it depegged from a dollar, hitting a low of 84 cents. This will need to get back to a dollar quickly to regain trust from the community. Let's see this get back to a dollar. What's interesting is Bitcoin spiked 3% in the past 24 hours. People might be starting to pour money into Bitcoin as and putting it on a cold storage wallet as it's hard to even trust your own bank with your money right now. I personally have a big long-term investment in Bitcoin. I think it's good to have some con exposure to Bitcoin. This collapse caused the share price of SIVB to tank from $270 to $33, and it would have kept falling, but the SEC and NASDAQ stepped in and halted trading from it. The next FOMC meeting to make a decision on rate hikes is March 21st. Because of this bank collapse, many believe they'll do a 25-point hike or pause rate hikes completely when it was previously predicted to be a 50 basis point rate hike. CPI data will be this week on March 14th at 8.30 a.m. This will be a major market mover. This bank collapse will not have any any impact on the amount of winners we find in the penny stock market, which is why starting this week in the Discord, members will receive text messages to their cell phone of great penny stock setups. This text service in the Discord will provide more value than all of the other penny stock text message services out there, and you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to access this. Click the Discord link in the top pinned comment to get Discord access and text access. First stock ticker VS at an 8.49 million market cap. I covered this in a previous video, and we had a beautiful 20% run the next day on Friday, even after the overall market took a big old dive. Spy down 1.45%, but our VS is up 20%. It actually hit a high of 93 cents shortly after the market opened on Friday. That was up like almost 40% on one point. I still believe this has great potential, but what's very important is getting the right price. It's always about getting the right price with these penny stocks. A lot of it is timing, which is why I always say, you know, turn on the notification bell. These videos are time sensitive. Drop a like on the video so it, you know, recommends these videos to you in the future. But I like pullbacks on VS to 75 cents, 73 cents, and I like that 70 cent support. VS has big spikes on positive news. Now, they have a press con they have a conference from March 12th to the 14th, which is early next week. The 12th is actually today, so it goes on a little bit longer into this week. This does not mean they will drop news, but it would be smart for the company in my opinion if they want to attempt to reach NASDAQ compliance organically, which is over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. I have no idea if they're going to drop news, but they do have a conference. Some people like to, you know, there's some people look at this as a nice catalyst, as I do. I usually look at, it, look at it as a catalyst, you know, leading up to the conference and then you take profits. But and every now and then companies drop news, you know, while the conference is going on. The cost to borrow is 425%. So VS is a top watch this week for sure. Next stock ticker, GTII at a 485 million market cap, up 12% on the previous trading day, $1.87. That $2 level is going to be that big resistance. And I continue to be very bullish on GTI. I've been talking about this one for a bit and a potential run leading up to the 1-800 law firm acquisition 
plan plan to be closed on or before April April 1st and that's still coming but we got yet again another huge catalyst for GTII GTII plans to offer a restricted dividend to its shareholders and we saw what CLNV on the OTC markets which G GTII is on the OTC markets we saw what CLNV did leading up to that dividend now, GTI, GTII will offer one share for every 10 shares owned, and the record date is to be decided. So once we get that record date and we get that date, you know, we could see a run up leading up to that date. Plus, we got the acquisition. It's going to be huge, especially if this dividend is very, very soon. And with the acquisition, you know, like I said, it could be explosive. This could be an explosive runner in the coming weeks. That's just my personal opinion. And I've been talking about this one for a bit. This is the biggest call stock in the OTC right now. Everybody's talking about the Alpine concentrated short position in GTII. This could get retail really crazy about this stock, could cause a lot of hype. This is a top play going forward. And here is the um, the form where it says a concentrated short position is in GTII. To show you how much of a cult stock this is, you have people going to the SCC HQ with a truck showing this document right here to the SEC, or at least trying to, proving Alpine had a concentrated short, posi short position in GTII. You don't see this every day. There's a lot of catalysts. There's a lot of people behind this play. Retail loves it. I really think it can do very well, but, you know, dilution, anything can happen. I haven't seen GTII dilute at all, so, you know, I'm feeling confident about that one. Next stock, HUBC, up 14% on the previous trading day, $1.07 right now. This continues to have crazy amount of chatter all over social media. They sent out a tweet recently that A Labs committed a 20 million pipe investment at $10 per share. They ended up deleting this tweet, and I believe it's because they never posted an 8K or a PR about it, which is not a good look for HubC. We need them to file this through the SEC to give shareholders confidence, but there's no doubt it's a bit of a concern when they're deleting this tweet. The dust has settled, like I was talking about last HubC update, and the market cap is $209 million with a $71 million flow. I'm still watching this one. I believe there's potential here, but the way they are handling this merger and all of this news they're putting out is concerning. I think it's a very risky play. It's an Israel stock, and I've seen these companies burn investors in the past, but with that high risk comes that high potential reward. Just be very careful. I do think it has a lot of potential, but I do think you have to take very like a lot of risk precaution here and risk management because it, you know, it's just looking very sketchy in a way. Another one to look at is ticker PXMD at a 19 million market cap. This is an easy play if you're using risk management. PXMD is potentially setting up a triple bottom pattern. Now, the reason I say it's easy is because there's support at $1.36. You know, we got the triple bottom pattern and we're attempting to bottom out right here. Now, if it falls below $1.36, you know, that could be a concern and I would have a stop loss at around $1.25 here so I can get kicked out at the all-time low before for a potential further downtrend because once it hits an all-time low, sometimes it, you know, you're on a falling knife at that point and you don't know how low it can go. It can go to pennies. So, this can be an easy play if you're using proper risk management. The last two times, you know, it bottomed out here, it ran to three dollars, and the previous time it ran to four at four fifty. So keep an eye on this one. The catalyst is their phase three results due in the first half of 2023. If these results are bad, the stock can tank. But if they're good, we can fly. It's important to use a stop loss on this one. So keep an eye on PXMD. The short interest is 32 percent. Cost to borrow is 449 percent. This can have short squeeze potential with with some volume. Next stock ticker 10x, a five million market cap. This is a potential momentum trading opportunity this week. It has a ton of chatter. It could move, but make sure you just ride that wave and take your profit. Don't get stuck holding the bag. Don't listen to crazy price targets. A lot of people are talking about they have warrants at $1.80. They might want to exercise these warrants. Yes, the company might see the momentum right now and say, let's get a PR out. Let's do something here. Let's get it to $1.80 so we can get our money. That, But that means a lot of people are going to be selling at $1.80. So if it gets up to that point, you're probably going to might want to be selling at like $1.50. Uh, that's not financial advice. It's just what I can see happening right now. If it gets close to that $1.80, there's going to be a lot of people. 
I want to be the first person out. I'm going to take profit at $1.50. I'm going to take profit at $1.70. So keep an eye on it for that. I don't even know if it can get close to $1.80 because this company has diluted in the past. They might exercise warrants even lower. But it has a lot of hype, a lot of people talking about it. It has that scalp potential. Now, if you want to get 17 free stocks, click the Moo Moo link in the top pin comment. You have to deposit after creating an account using my link and then deposit $100 to get two free shares of ticker AI or BBAI. Drop a like on this video. This week's going to be crazy. Comment down below. That's it for me. Peace.